Hello, welcome to another edition of From the Bars to the Bricks Prison Ministries. I'm your favorite felon, Kev. Today is a little bit of a reaction video to a video that I have really avoided trying to react to, but it's a huge problem. And as a Christian, I have to speak out on this. And after seeing some uh, people of color and breaking down this video, and even they disagreed, um, a couple fellow pastors and um, one pastor encouraged me to uh, to do this video. And so that's what we're going to do today. Um, before I continue, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I want to hear from you. You can see below that new coffee, me and Eric, Eric Swanson, prison from the streets, my little brother. We've got our own line of coffee. It's good, good stuff. Premium premium brew you should get yours today it's the kind of coffee you get somebody and they get that and they drink it and be like i know i'm loved because they got me the best coffee there is it makes starbucks taste like poo maybe not quite that good but hey it's it's good coffee um you guys try it check it out Please uh, help support the ministry, support mine and Eric's channels. Uh, this is a joint adventure. So, you know, me and Eric are splitting and it will go into our channels and to improve our channels and to be able to bring you better and better content and for us to be able to do more within our community as well. So without further ado, let us get into this video. So I... This video was actually brought to my attention a couple days ago. I mean, I've seen it on my feed and stuff, and I just really try to avoid conflict, especially when it comes to racial conflict. I used to be a very racist individual. Uh, I believed in the, we were supreme, we were better than everybody, uh, this and that, and that was wrong. It was absolutely not Christian not even a good way to believe not even as a christian so and then so anyway i really struggle even sometimes today um something will happen and i'll go back revert back to it so i really try to avoid those triggers because for some reason my sinful old mind will still go to them uh negative thoughts and stuff and reactions and an reaction that shouldn't be because we should react with hate to hate with love as Christians. Hmm. I'll say that again. We should react to hate with love. Two wrongs does not make a right, no matter where it is. Racism is racism no matter what color you are and what color you're speaking against or trying to stop. It is an issue it has an ongoing issue and you know let us not let it continue to be an issue because until we speak up against it until we do something about it it's just not gonna ever be taken care of so let me pull up this file i've kind of pre-edited this down uh i will have links to the original, um, they will be in the description. So something going on for a while now, and we're being told that. Let's uh, let's pause this for a second, and we'll bring it back. Uh, let me see if I can get a better view here. Let me see what this. There we go. Let me get me out of the screen, and where you can see this, this is um. And like I said, this this guy is just uh, he is speaking out against some of the stuff in these videos that are on TikTok. And this guy here uh, actually said he used to be racist, and so you know, um, and it's Charlie Charlie Chown, and the original video uh, that I'm speaking on is off his site, and uh, I'm reacting to and. He actually has a really good um, voice on it, and I can't, uh, 
you know, it just, it's one of those that, man, I just, I've got to react to. And I even, I commented on another pastor's video and I uh, told him, man, thank you. I have kind of refrained from this because I'm white and I did not want to be come across as racist because I definitely no longer feel that way. In fact, you know, I sit there and, and one thing that helped me was when I got a friend of mine that become really close and just happens to be black. And uh, we talked so that he we got talking one day and he said, name one race that has all good people or all bad people, honestly. And nobody can ever think of one because there's good and bad. It's character should not have anything to do with skin color. A lot of stuff that people call different, whatever, it's all about character. It's not about color. So that is what we need to focus on. Now, without further ado, let's get onto this video here. Let's talk about what we're doing to white people. There's been something going on for a while now that we're being told not to notice. More to the point that we're asking white people not only to ignore, but to accept the rising tide of racial hatred against white people. In the past decade, there has been a noticeable cultural shift in what constitutes acceptable speech as it relates to white people. Back when I was a kid in the early 2000s, the mainstream American culture preached about respecting each other's differences and not seeing color. Nowadays, we say that not seeing color is racism, that you must see color. Now, I don't know where he's getting that, that nowadays we must see color because unless he's taking it from like the Black Lives Matter movements and stuff like that, but that's the problem. We can't fight racism with rep racism and separation. It's about coming together as people, not of white people, black people, yellow people. I mean, Denzel Washington said it best. Let, let's get rid of the black man, white man, this and that. He said, my name's Denzel. Or no, I said, it was Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry. He said, my name's Morgan. And, you know, my name's Kevin. It's not white boy or white man or whatever. We need to get away from that. And even within our own races, the, the put downs and stuff like that, where it becomes just like a regular word and okay to say, that's not cool at all. It don't matter where it comes from. It's still a racist comment. Well, we'll see if this video will play. Come on. I done irritated the video. But the more I see how things are unfolding, the more I'm convinced that this is wrong. Back then, saying something offhanded about white people were seen as not appropriate, just as it would be to say something offhanded about people of any other race. But that soon gave way to our current <clears throat> in which there exists virtually no limit to what racial minorities can and do say about white people. I believe True. this is the natural outgrowth of a perverse ideology that teaches us that everything, every societal ill is the fault of white people and that whatever prejudice acts we may inflict upon them does not constitute discrimination because we don't have the power to discriminate. And alarmingly, this is particularly pronounced in the younger generation, but is it true? Do we not well, have the power to discriminate? Yep. Well, let's see. First, let's take a look at the racial hatred at the interpersonal level. In today's society, it has become somewhat fashionable to think things and say things about and to white people that would not be acceptable if it was said about any other race. But we're being taught that this double standard is not wrong, that it is rather a form of empowerment. They'll attribute negative experiences that they've had with white people to their whiteness. You had an argument in line at the grocery store with a white person? They were acting entitled because they were white. A white driver cut you off when you were driving? They need to check their white privilege. Your actions, your conduct, and your existence, in other words, boil down to your whiteness. And ashamedly. So what happens when you get cut off by uh, someone that's not white or in an argument that grows toward someone that's not white? It's what does that contribute to? It wouldn't be their whiteness or a white privilege. So, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that because that's not. Because it's not white privilege or anything like that. It's character. It's someone's character or lack of character that these things, not 
color of skin or anything like that. It just, you have people good and bad in every color. And just because some white person down the road did something bad to you, don't mean every white person is bad. Just because our ancestors enslaved people and all that don't mean that we enslave people or we even agree with slavery. So some of this stuff is just, man. And that, uh, at least we have a slow connection today. Video's taking a minute to start back up. But this guy really has some valid, valid points. And, uh, it's just enraging that people think it's okay and uh, to still um, talk this way about people, no matter what their color or situation. It just, it's crazy. And for some reason, my video is not wanting to play again today. We're... At one point in time, this was how I used to think as well. And beyond the people in my circle, I noticed that many people of color have this sort of blase attitude an attitude most particularly pronounced when there are no other white people around. Things are being said not just behind closed doors, but out in the open, not just between close friends, but between complete strangers. So here's the thing. This is something that I've experienced countless times, so I know that there are other people who are experiencing it too. I know it must resonate with at least some of you. The difficulty here is that no matter how many anecdotes I share, they are just that, anecdotes. And people who refuse to believe that this is happening will just chalk it up to my experience as being a fluke. Or worse yet, they'll say I'm lying. So I've compiled some TikTok videos. I want you to take a look at the things that are being said about white people, especially by the younger generation, <laughs> the kind of statements people wouldn't dare say about people of any other race. Take a look and these, at what is stunningly in vogue in today's society. And ask these are, some of them are crazy. I haven't here. heard all of them, so. A token white, and you're hanging out with your friend group of color, you need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like, don't just bring them. Them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like, don't don't let them think they're a good white person. Accomplices ask, how can they support black and indigenous people of color? And sometimes I really don't know what to say, but here's one easy way. Just don't have babies. Men can single-handedly cause the white genocide that they are so afraid of. With 2.25 billion Asian women and half a billion white men, Baby, it'll only take two generations. In two generations, there will no longer be any blonde haired. These are some things I noticed about white American culture. Being grounded is a punishment to them. That's what they call punishment. Mm. The least grounded, least balanced, what? most destructive race considers being grounded a punishment. Yeah. They also say really violent phrases. They say things like, Kill two birds with one stone. I have to kill the birds. Why is everything so violent? It's almost like. And that saying originally come from one of our founding fathers and said the well, one of the influencers of founding father, Thomas Hobbes. And it was not a, a violent situation. And I've heard that or a, a phrase and I've heard that phrase through many people. In fact, um, one of the guys and the reactions uh, on the pen tv was like he said man my grandma said that all the time my mama said that or something like that. and it was like she's not racist and this was a man of color this man was, so it just and and to be honest we're all of color none of us are clear so this whole white black yellow all that that's really those colors aren't even accurate to define us even if you wanted to be like that so i don't know it just uh, what more like peaches or something i guess so i'm a peachy now I, i'm no longer white maybe the hair is white but you know it's just insane how people i don't get the hate and you can't stop hate with hate hate begets hate and it just it's so like one's language and phrases reflects one's nature Hmm. So that new uh, Jeffrey Dahmer movie on Netflix is the perfect example of the sensationalization of white violence. People have a much easier time sympathizing with white criminals than they do with black victims. 
people think these shows are harmless, but they actually contribute to a much bigger issue. It contributes to the viewpoint that white people are less violent than everyone else, and white violence is something to be consumed in media. That's it. What is with so I just did a video not too long ago, one of the most horrific crimes, and it they weren't white, but it still had no relation to the color of their skin, to the crime they did. It was poor character, bad people. The Carr brothers are not good. It wouldn't matter what color they were, but it's not just whites, and it just... All races have bad people. All races have good people. So it's just, uh, it's just. And as Christians, I'll get into that here in a minute. As Christians, we're really, really completely wrong if we're even doing any of this or allowing any of this to go on around us. Because, you know, we're commanded to love our enemies and just because someone's a different color don't make them an enemy but even if you think for whatever in your deranged mind that they are Caucasian still supposed to love people them. in like their inability to like read a fucking room like y'all act like you don't understand shit because y'all be the first ones during a conversation about the holocaust to get so mad when black people be like you do realize that the original Jewish people were black, right? White people do not need to explain to anybody. About there were black Jews, but they weren't red, all because, baby, black. You all are the people that need to learn that lesson. Clearly, history shows that you all are the people that like to pillage and eradicate, enslave and oppress, attempt to suppress greatness because you all simply don't have it, right? Here go y'all come goblins who don't even live in the fucking city. Which, by the way, the Q-tip people are the last ones to ever talk about somebody stealing anything. Y'all wouldn't be in this country had it not been for y'all stealing it. But well, y'all are more focused on people looting and trying to get necessities and things that they need. And yes, a TV is a fucking necessity. Thank you. But you feel like you're better than because people are out here. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So a TV is a necessity, first of all. I'm lacking. I don't have a TV. Man, I don't have my necessities. So I guess... That don't even make sense. So, and and furthermore, how I agree the the country was not we did not obtain the country in the proper manner. However, so what makes it any different? Even if we if they we stole the land. Now you want to live here too. So now are you not guilty? of theft as well because if i steal a car and i go pick you up and get in the car and ride with me and we get pulled over you're an accessory you're just as guilty so now wouldn't you moving into a country that's stolen wouldn't that make you just as guilty i think we all owe the native americans an apology you know it just i don't get the hate and the it's just two wrongs don't make a right either. I mean, so there are people and there are some crappy, crappy white people out there. The white supremacist stuff like that. They are some hate groups. And let me tell you, it's not just against black people or Jews. Or they hate a lot of white people, too. They hate me because I'm a Christian and I speak out against stuff. I'm white. I, I mean, just so it's not even I just. It's just so, uh, man, uh, <laughs> these, these people are just so ignorant. And it just shows TikTok, too. TikTok is just, it seems like the, I agree with the uh, one of the other passages, the lack of brain cells on TikTok. Um, First of all, if you are a male monster. That is how your ancestors got everything from stealing. People are and that's a behavior that's very common among white women. You may have not intended that, but there are many white women 
who act exactly like you. Is she trying to speak Hebrew? To donate to the discriminated white fund. You'd be helping millions. He says high protein like cicadas and cheese. Make sure you... That right there. What caucasity looks like? Roaming Asian grocery stores like it's an amusement park. Caucasity. I never heard of this till the other day. But wear shoes inside. We are inherently a danger in spaces for black, indigenous, and other people of color simply by existing. It's white cis men who are a part of the far right wing ideology of fascism. That is a true threat and the terrorism to this country. If five POCs stand in the street and scream at the top of their lungs, I hate all white people, I want all white people to go die, die white devil, you cracker bitch. Um, that's still not racism. You're not one of the good white people. Stop <laughs> is separating racism. us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are that. We are the ones shooting up schools. We are the ones raping people, the ones enslaving people. We're and I'll say it. I hate being white. You know, which means I'm one of the good ones. All white people are inherently racist. Yeah. Can you be racist against white people? Based off of the definition of racism, yes, but it's not going to hurt them and hurt their opportunities like it does people of color. Well, technically. <clears throat> well. This is just a fine opportunity to bring up that, you know, you can be racially discriminated against no matter what your color. So when I was in El Dorado in 2000 and um, I want to say 2008, I worked in the kitchen. I was a baker. I was the only baker that had knowledge and that they could keep. Because they couldn't keep equipment like mixers going. So there was days I had to make 3,000 biscuits mixed by hand. Or cake or whatever mixed by hand. And when you're talking batches of the big old mixers, you know, you're talking a 50-pound 50 50 bag of cake mix. And uh, it's a lot of, a lot of work for by hand. But anyway, so... There was a minimum wage position came open, and they only have so many slots. One technically was supposed to be for the head baker, but they decided they wanted to put all into the cooks. And so I put in for this position. I had this position. They were going to give it to me. Um, and then one of the cooks, who happened to be black, went in and complained that if they give it to me, he's going to call the NAACP and raise cane and stuff because they gave it to a white guy and not a black guy. Now, Aramark didn't think this through because there was two other guys on the minimum wage that were black and one white. So if anything, it had been discriminatory against Mexicans or Asians. There was none in their minimum wage. But another white person would have been equal. However, Aramark didn't see it that way. And they called me in and told me, basically, because you're white, you're not getting the job. I have to hire this guy because he's black. I have to give him the position. It had nothing to do with qualifications or other thing. And I'm not hating on the other guy because he was a decent cook. But he wasn't reliable. He didn't show up a lot of days. He was late. He would mess up. Um... Plus, he was dealing in contraband. Not only did he get fired a couple weeks later, but two other Aramark workers got fired with him because they were bringing him in contraband. This was the person they chose to give the minimum wage slot to because they didn't want to give it to me because I was white. So it does cause issues. So I was to make a dollar five a day instead of $8 an hour, and that's not discrimination. That's not, it didn't affect me because I was white, but it did. But that don't make the other fella bad or whatever. And it don't do me any good 
to hate because of it. It it's just it's ignorant. It's like uh, I don't remember who it said it, but it's like drinking poison, and expecting the other person to die when we're mad, or we just let someone irritate us, something like that, so bad, and so it's just pointless. Let's continue. Well, you can. It's not like an issue. You can't right. oppress the oppressor. It helps you sleep at night. I'm racist to white people. I'm proud of it. Why do people not understand that you can't be racist to white people? It's it's impossible. The system is not set up that way. You can insult white people, but it is not racism. Me calling a white person a tub of mayonnaise and a, like a flower looking ass. It's not. That's not racist. You went all the way to Africa to physically take black people from their homes, shove them in on boats where a lot of them got diseases and died, told them where they could sit on a bus, told them which yes. schools they could go to, which water fountains they could use, which bathrooms they could use, and that's sugarcoating it. Those are just turns. Well, I mean, that is in some ways sugarcoating, but also it's a lie because the white people didn't go over to Africa and just start collecting people and putting them on ships and bringing them over here. The Egyptians and the other people that were already enslaving them sold them to the United States and which that don't make it right either, but at least get the facts straight. None, none of them are good, but I mean, at least get them straight. If you're going to just bash and I tell you what, I'm old, but I'm not that old. I wasn't there. I didn't bring one slave over. I've never owned a slave. Maybe my kids might say that they were my slaves. My grandkids and nieces and nephews may say they're my slaves sometimes, but not literally. And so you can't hold that against me. That's just. Uh, uh. Right, here we go. Video thing. So sorry, people, about my video today. It, my Internet seems to be slagging and lagging a little bit. Color. But the more I see how things are unfolding, the more I'm convinced that this is wrong. Back then, saying something offhanded about white people were seen as not appropriate, just as it would be to say something offhanded about people of any other race. Nope. Correct. Oh, man, I really messed up, didn't I? Well, you may have not intended that, but there are. We get the, the point, you know, it's. Scream at the top of their lungs. I hate all white people. I want all white people to go die. Die, white devil, you cracker bitch. Um, that's. I just. You know, we see that here. It's banning white people from rock climbing lessons. One of many, many, many instances of. All right, so you get the idea, and it just. Oh man, I. I <sighs> Sorry, it's it's not even the the reaction is not even as much intense because I'm white. It's. Because of the hate and and people just justifying it, it's it, it's so ridiculous. Just I, that's just uh, that don't make any sense. So do you hold the same? So if I'm white and a white person, another white person, commits a crime against me or something or offends me, so now am I supposed to hate white people on the same basis? Um, or if you're black and the other black person does something to you, uh, drive by or uh, whatever, it's just dumb. But I mean, it's and again, there's stereotyping again, just a drive by. I shouldn't even said that with black because that happens in every color. And it just but these are stereotypes. Every black person don't smoke crack. Every white person isn't racist and owns slaves and hateful against other people and try to oppress. I want to see everybody succeed. Now, let me, as a pastor, if any of these people claim to be Christians, they are going directly against the word of God. And I can claim to be anything. Just because I say I'm a Christian don't mean I'm a Christian. I can say I'm a rocket scientist, but I'm not. I know nothing about rockets but i can say it but my actions will prove whether i'm a rocket scientist or not obviously they've proven i'm not never built a rocket except for maybe a model rocket it didn't even fly right so uh you know i'm not a rocket scientist but i however i am a christian you can look at my life and see i'm a christian i'm not perfect but i try
to be like Christ more and more every day. And if I'm a better person than I was the day before, then that's success. I will never achieve perfection as Jesus was the only person to ever walk this earth that was perfect. But that don't keep me from trying. So anyway, let's see what Jesus says just about this subject. So even if, okay, you got this dumbass idea that you hate these people for whatever reason. Well, what's Jesus say about that? Uh-oh. What do you mean? This, this is a topic. What does the Bible say about enemies? It's a topic it's something we all struggle with at times. I mean, it's like, how can we love someone that just keeps sinning against me? They give me no reason to love. Them. Do you give God a reason to love you? A Christian sins before a holy God, yet he still pours his love onto us. There was a time when you're an enemy of God, but Christ loved you and saved you from the wrath of God. You can't learn to love your enemy unless you are a new creation. You can't be a new creation unless you're saved. If you're not saved or not sure, go in the description, email me. Let's talk. Let's see what we can do to bring you to Christ. When you're in loving your enemies, it helps you to conform into the image of Christ. Our first response to something shouldn't be to throw up your middle finger or get in a fight stance. If you're a Christian, you got to know you're being watched like a hawk by unbelievers. They just want to pick every little thing you do wrong and blow it up. So we got to be a good example to everyone you know and it just uh you know it, it god tells us that we are to love our enemies cannot a simpleton love uh, i i'm kind of sorry cannot a simpleton love their friends but what does it take to love your enemy Man, it's how much more and how much more powerful to love your enemy. You know, it just, uh, it's weird to love everyone. So in Matthew 7, 12, so in everything do to others what you would have them to do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophets. The golden rule, treat others as you wish to be treated. So if you want to be treated in a racist manner, hated against, discriminated against, I guess treat other people that way. But I don't know anybody who wants to fight that oppression and deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. No matter what your color, what your religion, what your preferences, or whatever the case, we're not to hate and just tear each other apart. John, 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us want love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. But you know what? It just, I, I don't even <laughs> understand. But let me just, I'm going to close with these last two scriptures. I don't want to, this video has been on going too long. And it's a very important subject, however, it's just too long. For do good to those who don't like you. Luke 6, 27 to 32 says, But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who are cruel to you. If anyone slaps you on the cheek, Offer the other cheek too. If someone takes your coat, do not stop them from taking your shirt. Give to everyone who asks you. But then someone takes something that is yours, don't ask for it back. Do to others what you should want them to do to you. If you love only the people who love you, what praise should you get? Even sinners love people who love them. And then Matthew 5, 41 to 48. It just... 
And if one of the occupation troops forced you to carry his pack one mile, carry it two miles. When someone asks you for something, give it to him. When someone wants to borrow something, lend it to him. You have heard that it was said, and these are words of Jesus. You have heard that it was said, love your friends, hate your enemies. But now I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may become the children of your father in heaven. For he makes his son to shine on the bad and good people alike and gives rain to those who do good and to those who do evil. Why should God reward you if you love only the people who love you? Even the tax collectors do that. And if you speak only to your friends, have you done anything out of the ordinary? Even the pagans do that. You must be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. See, it's just... There's too much hate in this world, you guys. Let's just make this world a better place. Let's change this world. Make a difference. It, love, love, love. Or as my daddy used to say, if you don't have nothing nice to say, just don't say nothing at all. But it's still not going to help. Until we start educating our children differently. As long as we keep even educating our children about racial differences, even in the least, we are making separations. When we treat, tell our kids that, oh, you have to be careful because of this or that. You got to watch white people. You got to this or that. You're teaching hate against white people. Not all white people are bad. Not all black people. Not all Asians. Not all nobody is bad. There's some really good people within every race. There's some really bad people within every race. Let's stop making life about color and about our personal decisions. Let us glorify God. Treat each other as we wish to be treated. And this world would be such a better place. Like Gandhi used to say, be the change that you want to see in the world. So Barstow Brooks Ministries, that's exactly what we're doing. We are being the ch positive change that we want to see in the world. Thank you guys for watching and listening. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, Whatever that you don't want public, go to the description and grab my email. Send me an email if you want prayer. You need help coming to Christ. Whatever the case is. If you got questions, you're not sure, we'll talk about it. We'll see what we can do for you. Need some counseling. I'm here for you. Thank you guys very much. God bless everybody, and I hope everybody has just an amazing, amazing weekend. More blessed than stressed. I've been your favorite felon. I'm Kev, and I am out. <laughs>